Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I have a very special guest. I have Mike Breverick on our uh, podcast today, and he is a owns a marketing company, and he has some great info to talk about today, and I'm very excited to have him on the show. But before we begin, I just want to do a quick shout out to dmaworld.com. They are a marketing consultant agency that helps specific businesses grow. They focus on the small businesses, and they don't want those large businesses to scam you. So dmaworld.com is here for you and they'd like you to check them out and see if you're compatible to them. And they, they are a great business. So check them out, ask for Mark and he's there for you. So Mike, tell me a, a little about what you do. And, you know, I'm very excited because we were talking before the show and you, you pointed out a lot of important things about growing your brand and some other great things about helping people really get their businesses to thrive. So tell everybody a little about yourself. Yeah. So I'm Mike Brevik. Um, I own a company called Cyber Dogs and we are a creative slash marketing agency where, you know, we work with a, with a lot of different size clients and whatnot, anywhere from kind of jumping in and helping them kind of reshore or recalibrate their marketing efforts. But also a lot of it um, is kind of from concept to completion where we help them create the brand, create the logo, and then everything that, that goes with it. So all the supplemental pieces from uh, developing a website to social media strategy and then execution of it. Um, so our, our goal is to kind of build relationships with customers and make sure that, you know, if we can help them kind of create and, and connect all the dots of marketing, that they'll kind of come out to the other side a lot stronger, a lot more confident about their business and and hopefully see a lot greater success. You know, I, I, I love that, you know, you were talking about, you know, there are a lot of um, components about building a strong brand. And one of the factors is that, you know, building that long-term relationship. And I, I like how you were talking about, you know, it's not just, you know, going in there, helping them and leaving, but it's, it's about building a relationship with your, your customer and then helping them build that brand. Maybe you could talk a little about, like, you know, about how it's important to have a, when you, when you go into a marketing company, it's important to have a, a very good close relationship with them. So they understand you and then how we can, you know, how you go about actually helping them build their brand because building, you know, explain the importance about building brands also. Yeah. So, you know, we get a couple different scenarios. Sometimes, you know, sometimes we get somebody who's new to business. It's their first, you know, kind of dive into entrepreneurship and, um, you know, I don't mean this the way it sounds, but they only know as much as they know that day, you know, they right. have a, they have a plan, they have a strategy, they have kind of an idea of what they're going to do with this business, but they only know what they know that day. Right. And to build a brand and to build kind of a strategy and a focus around that. Yes, we can start there, but the magic really comes over time as you start to kind of develop you know, a sense of what works, what doesn't, you start to see the patterns, you start to get an idea of, you know, kind of where you need to pivot or maybe where you need to even combine or join forces with another person or industry. So right. that time is important. So I'm, I'm very aware and, and kind of want to make sure clients understand that, like, we need to take this in chunks. Like, yeah. I know everybody wants to come out of the gate hot and they want to a light switch type situation where the results just happen. But we need to kind of think methodically about this and plan for the long term so that we can evolve it as we go. And it's a natural progression. So you don't, you know, find yourself five years into this business and then have to blow it up and start over because everything's changed. Right. So, so we really focus on kind of filling in those gaps and those details. And, and sometimes that, you know, it comes with a conversation about, retainer versus project where yes we can help you execute logo website these different things that are kind of check boxes along the way right but how we should really look at it is we should look at an ongoing discussion that's month over month over the course of a year for example so to help them you know not only develop that partnership with us but also to develop their mindset and and start to kind of develop a set of expectations to go with it you know, I think a lot of times too, I, I come across clients also that they, you know, people get very impatient and they, they want everything, they want quick results and there really isn't 
quick result. It takes time to build a, 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 a profitable and successful brand. Now, how do you feel about that? I, I 100% agree. And the challenge is, is, you know, sometimes you get lucky and sometimes things happen and sometimes they don't. And when they happen, great. Take the take it and run with it. Right. However, the, the trick is, is can you replicate it now? Yeah. So whatever happened to me there where it worked, it, it sold, I made the money, like I got the client or whatever my goal was, I'm going to take that as a win. But do I know how that happened? Can I replicate that? Is right. there a, a standard operating procedure behind it? So yeah. like, that's the other thing is through those relationships, we try to work with clients to try to make this stuff repeatable. Like we want right. to get control over as much of this as we can so that when backed in a corner or when needed, we can really kind of create our own steam in a way. Right. And then, you know, there's peaks and valleys obviously all the time, but as much of that as that can be kind of planned out and predicted, the better. And right. that's not to take away from the success that, that people have, but to really true have sustain, you know, true sustainability over the long term. Yeah. We have to be we have to be able to draw back to those successes and try to recreate it. And I feel sometimes, you know, in business, you know, a lot of times we have a goal and we think this is the journey that we're supposed to be on. And then all of a sudden there's a curveball. And what you thought your business was actually going to be, sometimes it takes you in a little bit of a different direction. And people really want something else from you, you know, and they they see your strengths in other areas. And, you know, people are really liking something else that you might do. And people are fixated on, you know, I have one goal and this is what I want to do. But I think people need to be open minded because I think a lot of times, even in my own experiences in life and many of my clients, you know, kind of, you know, their journey kind of switched as they were moving and, and elevating in their business. And sometimes, you know, what you think and what actually happens is two different things. How do you feel about that? In, in my opinion, it's not a matter of if it's a matter of when, mm -hmm. like how you start your business or whatever you feel like is the plan today. Inevitably, it will pivot, change, evolve. Things are going to happen. And that's OK. That's that's just the way it works. But right. um, I think it's important when you're building that plan and that strategy and that you're building kind of the house, so to yeah. speak, that where your business is going to live. Yeah. You need to you need to build it to scale and evolve so that who knows what happens in five years, I'm able to kind of make some moves there. Right. So like even something as simple as a website, like don't don't lock yourself into a platform or a structure that can't morph into something else, two, three versions from now. You know, right. you will outgrow things and that's okay too. But as much as you can protect your own ability to be nimble and your own ability to evolve you'll be ready for anything. Um, right. You know, when COVID happened, that was one of the big things that, you know, we really coached our clients on is, you know, pivot, don't panic. Yeah. If, if we've done our jobs right, we just need to make some adjustments. That's it. Don't, don't start shutting things down. Don't panic. Don't, because we've built it so that you can evolve and change. And right. luckily for us, you know, that it were kind of worked out in our favor that that's our mindset because we were able to help so many clients sustain. Yeah. That, you know, I, I don't know what else to attribute it to other than they were, you know, drinking the Kool-Aid and able to kind of make those adjustments without shutting their doors. Right. Now, what is your, your idea of, of how do you build your brand, a successful brand? And how do you, are, are, are you able to actually elevate your business into a successful business? Well, I, I, I mean, you got to make smart decisions. So you got to mm -hmm. be, you got to be well read. You got to research. You got to know your industry. And that's to me, kind of the milk, eggs, and bread of. That's what you have to bring to the table as a business right. owner or, or an entrepreneur. But then I think a couple things. I think you have to have a strong brand foundation. Yeah. I, I think you seriously need to look at your brand as something bigger and a living, breathing thing beyond just being a logo. Yeah. So exactly. the more you can foster and create a living, breathing brand that is able to kind of carry the weight and the and the reputation of what you do, but also sustain you through tough times. Mm -hmm. I think that's, it's huge. It's a huge, I think it's a huge gap that a lot of people just kind of 
scoff it away to some degree because they right. just either they don't understand it or they feel like the whole idea of branding is kind of a a trend that they're not going to buy into, but it's a real thing. Right. Um, and then lastly is just surround yourself with capable people, whether that's partnerships or employees or team members or whatever you want to say. Yeah. Um, I see so many entrepreneurs decide that I want to do it all myself from right. bookkeeping to marketing to like, I'm just going to wear all the hats. Yeah. And it's like, I get it. I'm, I'm guilty of it myself from time to time. Right. But the faster you can distribute those hats to qualified people, yes, the better off you're going to be and, and the faster your business is going to grow. And you'll be surprised how fast it grows. And if you're anything like me, you'll, man, I wish I'd have done that two years ago. I wish I'd have done that a week ago. I wish I, yeah. like once, once it starts to kind of sink in, you start to do it faster and so goes the business. The momentum picks up and all of a sudden it's like, right. wow, I, I really kind of, you know, disabled myself in the process by trying to wear too many hats. Right. I think, you know, like, um, it's very important not to wear all the hats because, you know, I'm also guilty of it sometimes myself. And I feel that's a great way to burn yourself out. And it's very hard to focus on so many different things all at once because you really i think important in, in, in to build a, a profitable business you really have to be focused and really focused on building that brand and it's as to me i i think it's very hard if you're spreading yourself out in so many different directions you it's it's virtually impossible and i think at some point you're going to burn yourself out and you can't put a hundred percent into your business when you're in so many different areas all at once how do you feel about that I, I completely agree. I think whether you're a, a person who can visualize things or not, as a business owner, you need to reserve think time for yourself to mm -hmm. just sit back, pontificate on what you're doing, not doing, where I need to be, because you need to just soak it in and kind of digest it. Right. And if And if you're so busy running from one thing to the next and you're never able to sit back and kind of observe what you're what, what's going on yeah you're never you're never going to see the gaps right you know and, and it's important to do that and i i know some people will say you know i'm not creative i'm not like that whatever your version of that is is you still need to do it yeah it, it could be a bike ride it could be hitting the treadmill for an hour or whatever but you need think time and you also talk about it's very important to have certain mindset and certain beliefs. Can you go a little deeper into that and explain to the audience why it's important to have a specific type of mindset and certain types of beliefs in order to be successful and to elevate your business? Yeah, you know, it's really as simple as if you don't believe in what you're doing, why would anybody else? Right. Um, I, I have clients and have dealt with clients and, and even have mentored other entrepreneurs on they're scared and I get it. You know, they're scared about, I don't want to leave my full-time job or I really want to start this business, but I don't know all these things. And they're, they're completely, you know, kind of held back by their anxiety and their fear of the unknown. Right. And for most people, you know, if you're, if you're driven and you're a problem solver and you're somebody who can, figure things out yeah that's that's 80 percent of the equation right there right and and the big 20 is i gotta believe in myself enough to i can do this right you know and if you don't have that it's scary yeah um i recently had a conversation with a client who didn't believe in it. he just didn't he didn't really have the confidence he needed to do it and i had to have kind of a blunt conversation with him about it like dude you need to can you do this or not? And he's like, well, yeah, I, I think I can. And I'm like, then stop questioning yourself. Yeah. Like just pick up the ball and run with it because there's going to be challenges. There's going to be struggles, but mindset and belief is a huge obstacle that you have to, you have to conquer that one first. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, and how do you build your brand? If you had to give, you know, if you had to give advice to people and they're like, well, I, you know, I don't really know much about branding, you know, why is it important? And how do I even go about it? You know, how, you know, what would be your response to that person? I think the first thing you have to do is you have to 
try to understand the difference between a logo and a brand mm -hmm. and why why it matters and because it's it's kind of philosophical in a way like a brand mm -hmm. and a logo depending on how you frame it could be interchangeable and right. that's true however a brand is something that you can feel you can smell you can touch you can like i imagine you know you walk into an apple store from the time you open that door from the cleanliness of the glass to the white kind of fixtures to how things are spaced out to the music that's running to the yeah. smell that hits you they are essentially brand gaslighting you from the minute you walk in that place right. to give you to give you an experience yeah and you know like there might be somebody listening that says well that's great but I'm not apple right you don't have to be apple to replicate parts of that exactly to give a to give a certain kind of experience or to give a certain level of customer experience or to have a brand visual from your from your brochures to your website that are very clean polished yeah you 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 can replicate a lot of that without being nike or without being apple right you know one of the things i tell my clients all the time is you don't have to spend a million dollars to look like a million dollar brand right now that being said imagine how many times you know we're kind of numb to it to a degree yeah like i'll have people tell me that well i don't really pay attention to that or i don't notice those kinds of things and it's like well I hate to call you a liar, but that's completely untrue yeah. because we all do it. If we walk into a restaurant or some place that looks unappetizing, yeah, we're not we're not going to eat there, right? But if but if we walk into a restaurant that looks super clean, put together, even if the food's bad, yeah, it'll be, it'll be packed because you're already planting that seed of expectation based off of how that brand kind of tells that story and what that experience is like. Exactly. So, so it's really important to kind of understand what that feels like, what that looks like. And, and it doesn't even have to be brands in your industry, but think about the brands you really like, you know, right. maybe it's a certain kind of shoe you wear, or a, maybe it's the kind of ketchup you buy. I don't know, but, but imagine kind of why you admire those brands, why you like them and, and how they kind of present themselves. And if you can, you know, kind of reverse engineer that and find elements of, hey, when I build my brand or my logo, here's yeah. the three, four things that matter most to me that I want people to feel when they when they experience my brand. And if you can get that far, that's a start that you're off to the races. It's really important. And the nice part about it is, is, is it inherently comes from inside the person. Yeah. which is which is that authenticity thing that people talk about all the time right it's, you can't man you can't manufacture authenticity no. either it's there or it's not exactly exactly and you know uh, it's it's so important that you know people recognize this because a, a lot of people you know um you know they they wonder is it is it is it so important that i have a, a you know a, a good website or is it about making connections and being able to you know present myself and my my you know my you know who i am and what i do you know how do you feel about like you know what's really the important thing or is a is a presentable website that important because i hear that some people say i don't even use my website i go on you know facebook i talk and i make videos i connect with people or i go on linkedin and i and i put videos out and i you know and i, and I, I make connections there is it more important to have a presentable website or is it really about make getting out there making connections and letting people know who you are what you do and why you're so compassionate about doing it um it's a combination of both okay so obviously being authentic and telling that accurate story and that's inherently whatever platform you're choosing yeah that needs that needs to be there but what but we always coach people or tell our clients is that there is a milk, eggs, and bread type element of marketing where everybody has a website, everybody has social media, you know, there's that. Yeah. But the but the important thing is, is whatever platforms you decide to use, mm -hmm. if you have an argument as to why I'm on YouTube and not a website or whatever, that's fine. 
as long as when you map out kind of your tree structure of yes this is my brand and here's how I reach my people and here's why I reach my people like if you can map that out Mm -hmm. and give justification and and connect those dots as to why it is what it is there's not a wrong answer right you know what the important thing is that you just know why each piece exists right like I have a website so that I'm represented online and people can find information about me or right. Maybe it's for SEO purposes. Right. I use YouTube as a repository for my videos. And I actually funnel people from my social media to YouTube, which then they're added to my database. If you can connect those dots and kind of justify the different pieces, because everybody has a different recipe. Yes. And they should. Yeah. But if you can justify and explain and at least start to strategically figure out why it is what it is. Yeah, you're you're off to the races because so many people just check the boxes. Yeah, like I'm going to start a business. So I need Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn and a website. and Then I'm good to go And <laughs> with without ever connecting the dots or establishing their strategy as to why. Yeah, they've only completed half the half the equation. So right. And is it important, how do you feel about like have, creating a vision strategy? Should everybody have a strategy in place? Because sometimes people have an idea and they just jump right into it, but they don't have a strategy. And, you know, how important do you feel like, uh, you know, really creating a strong strategy and visualizing where you want to be in three months? Where do you want to be in six months? Where would you like to be in nine months? And how am I going to get there? And then creating constructive goals to try to get yourself there and then just add in the blocks as you go along. I think that's really important somewhere in the process. Mm -hmm. But like, we don't want, like, we don't encourage, if, if they're if they're thought out enough where they can do it out of the gate. Yeah. Great. But a lot of times what happens is that becomes the the hurdle that they can't get past. Right. Like I'm so stuck on the strategy. I don't know where I'm going or what I'm doing. Yeah. The logo, the webs, nothing else matters. Cause I haven't even got that out of the way yet. Right. So, so there are times like with clients, we'll just say, forget the strategy for a minute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's just, let's just start laying some things down and putting things in place so that eventually, and and what happens is they start to kind of feel a little confidence like, oh, that's so cool. Or, oh man, I really love that. And you know what else we could do? And all of a sudden they start to kind of open up to the idea yeah. and then they're capable of providing a strategy where if you do it in the wrong order, depending on who the person is, it can can be debilitating. So you have to kind of you kind of have to play it, you know, depending on what their personality is, because you don't want to, you don't want to set the roadblocks up for them. Right, right. So what are some tips for people like some for, for entrepreneurs who are getting started, who are trying to build their brand? What would be some productive tips on how to get them on the right track? Just, you know, I think the first thing would be to d- define, um, Define and, and and find clarity on what exactly it is you want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I know a lot of people get swept up in just the the thrill of entrepreneurship and they yeah. kind of forget when the dust settles, they now own a business and they now all of a sudden are trying to live off this thing. And like, just don't get swept up in that. You have to have yeah. that clarity on what it is you're trying to do. Right. And just think through the pieces you know a lot of clients i meet with they don't they have no idea like i don't even i don't even have an idea as what a budget should be mm-hmm. and it's like well it's not necessarily what it should be it what it's what it is what can yeah. you afford because right. you you need to know that so that you can start to kind of figure out where you can start to distribute those hats as soon as possible and where right. you can spend money on some things and not others. And I, and I understand when you start a business, you have to kind of be methodical with your spend, but if you don't know your numbers, it's tough. So you have to, you have to kind of be ready to answer some of those questions and be okay with, you know, there's risk, you know, you have to be okay with uh, putting some risk out there and understanding that I need to invest X, Y, and Z yeah. So that I can hopefully get these kinds of results over the next 12 to 24 months or whatever your time frame is. Right. And a lot of, and a lot of times it then it, it comes back to that belief thing. Yeah. 
you know, if you can, if you don't have enough belief in what you're doing to spend a thousand dollars or whatever the number is, right? And you might not, you might want to wait on this business idea until you're yeah. ready, right? You know, so yeah. it's a lot of it's a lot of those things. But like first and foremost, talk to somebody, you know, like. Right. I, I encourage people to call me and ask me questions and I'll give you the as straight answers as, as I possibly can to help you work through these details. Cause right. there's so many things when you start a business, like, again, what you know today is nothing. It's tomorrow and the day after and everything that comes after that, where you're going to be like, well, I didn't expect that. Or I didn't plan for that. Right. You know, so it's a process, you know, so, so lean on people, ask questions, find mentors. Right. Yeah, I, I think it's very important to find mentors and to ask questions and, and because, you know, a lot of times they will see things from a different light or they've been in your shoes already. So they know what works. They know what doesn't work. And, it, you know, sometimes it's well worth it, you know, investing in people that have experience in that field because they will, you know, get you on the right track. So, you right. know, they, you know, like you were saying it's important, you know, in order to make money, you have to be able to spend money and to know your budget, you know, and to be able to just, you know, invest in, in and take a chance because that's the only way I think you'll move forward. How do you feel about that? No, I think it's totally true. Like I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm always a little hesitant to tell people how to spend their money, but when asked, like, I'll tell them, I'll say, well, if I had $10,000 to spend, right, I'd spend, I'd spend 10 of it building the most beautiful foundation I can possibly construct. Yes. And I would gamble on what happens next. Right. Because, because if you, if you skip that part, you're not mm -hmm. giving yourself a fair chance. It's kind of like the Apple store kind of a thing. Yeah. There's, there's a reason why they make those stores so beautiful because yes. when you walk in those front doors, you are overwhelmed with the confidence that, you're going to get some awesome product, awesome customer oh, service. Yeah. Like, like you're, you're brainwashed from the minute you walk in that store. A hundred percent. There's a reason. And there's a reason for that. And think about that, you know, like you want to, you know, any, any great restaurant, any great bar, any, uh, you know, even look at all these, uh, you know, these like U S bank stadium where the Vikings play all these different yeah. sports arenas, like, they put so much into providing an experience. They do. That it, that's not a coincidence. Right. So, so think about that. And again, you gotta, you gotta be smart with it, but do what you can talk to somebody and find out how to stretch that dollar. Right. Or, or figure out how to do it over time. You know, I mentioned a little earlier that we have a lot of clients that are more retainer versus project. And part of that is, is because it's digestible. Yes. You know, we don't, we don't hit them with all the expense up front. We get them, you know, so much per month because we know it's a progression and it's a, and it's a process anyway. Yeah. You know, there's, there's probably places out there that will help you do that so that you don't have to necessarily, you know, blow all your cash reserves up front. So. Right. Yeah. No, that's excellent. Those are excellent, you know, ideas and, and, and tips, you know, for, for people, I think is really important because, you know, so many people are afraid, you know, to, to mm -hmm. take those risks. And, you know, if you really believe in something, you, you have to take some risks, you have to, you know, be able to, um, if, you know, uh, spend a little bit of money to, to gain, you know, the, um, the, the services that you need in order to grow. Yeah, I, I yep. definitely think that's that's excellent advice. Definitely. Yeah, when I when I started Cyber Dogs, I had um I had 90 days. I figured out I figured out what my expenses were. Mm -hmm. And I had 90 days in the bank. I had 90 days cash in the bank. And that was my start. I I basically was like, well, I've got enough cash to live for 90 days to get this thing rolling. Right. And then that and then after that, I'm in trouble. <laughs> and, and that and that was eight years ago so right so you know it's possible you know it's definitely you know you know creating a successful business is possible and people have to believe in themselves they have to have that right mindset and they have to know how to you know really strategically you know get themselves 
to the point where they can build their brand properly and move forward. And like you said, you know, it's not all about just, you know, making a logo and, and doing certain things. It's really knowing what your goals are and then trying to meet those goals. Correct. Yeah, exactly. And, and being realistic about it, you know, like you're going to have a building year, you're going to have, you know, a, a process that kind of tapers back your expectations, not necessarily that they're low, but they're achievable because yeah. you want to, you want to hit that six month, that 12 month, that 18 month mark and go, I, I hit it. Yeah. You know, so that gives you enough confidence to go for another six or another 12 months. Right. Because if you, if you come out of the gate with no plan or no expectations or, you know, my only thing is I want to make a ton of money. That's it's way too vague and you're never going to know how you got there or how to get there or how to even replicate it. Like I said earlier, right. You have to have some measurables in there just for yourself, yeah. you know, just to kind of keep yourself calibrated. Right. A hundred percent. Now tell me some of the services that you offer as cyber dogs. Yeah. You know, we lead with um, kind of brand development and websites. So those are kind of our two things that we really lead with. But once they step through either one of those doorways, yeah, then it's it's really wide open from uh, social media support and management to strategy to paid ads to video to like we're we're essentially a full service agency, but we lead with the creative. Mm -hmm. One is because we we really think brand is important. Yes. So that's a way for us to kind of kind of filter clients and make sure that we're getting brand centric type clients, but also so that we can set ourselves up for home runs, you right. know, like, like we're in marketing to be creative and to have fun and to kind of do cool things like yeah. selfishly. That's what we want to do. Right. So, so we don't want to necessarily just take on every marketing problem out there either. So we're, we we kind of use that as a filter so that we can try to hit home runs and and do fun things from yeah. you know creating a really really cool brand to doing a you know a motorcycle build collaboration with right. Milwaukee Tool or something like that. It's just um, you know it's most people when they when they come to Cyber Dogs they know they're aware right they're aware we do a couple three four things. But once they realize, oh my God, you guys do all this other stuff too. Yeah. You know, we just don't lead with that. Right. That's so cool. Now, you know, I, I've noticed that our generation has changed. Our retention rate has changed. People like kind of easy to browse, clean, quick. Um, it seems like, you know, people like, you know, straight into the point. You know, sometimes I go onto websites and people have tons and tons and tons of information and it can be overwhelming, you know, for those people who have those websites, you know, what would you suggest about, you know, cause you know, times are changing. People don't like to read as much. People don't, you know, they like videos better. They really like, you know, they, they want to be in and out, get the information, you know, what do you suggest to people that are, are creating their websites and trying to get videos out and trying to put some social media up? Yeah. You have to be completely dialed in to what your intention is, to what it is you're truly selling to what, like, you have to be very direct. You have to be mm -hmm. very dialed in and you have to be very specific. You know, a lot of people would call it, you know, you have to be niche or niche. Right. It is that, but it's how you deliver that message. You know, mm -hmm. there was, I don't really know when it started, but there was a time and place online where everybody just wrote fluff. Yeah. Like every, every website was just a big fluffy representation of customer service and core values. And it was it is fine, but at the end of the day, you didn't really understand well, what do they do? Like, what am I yeah. getting from? Like, you never really got a clear picture as to right. what, what they were offering, you know, as part of the equation. Yeah. And I think because like you said, you've got a matter of seconds to catch somebody's attention and people are not reading that fluff anymore. Yeah. You have to be that much more direct. But I also think as much as the word authenticity was kind of a buzzword within the last five, 10 years. Yeah. It's now being called to the carpet as to 
they used to use authenticity as like this core value presentation to kind of give you this warm fuzzy. Yeah. And and now it's more brass tacks where it's like, are you really what you say you are or not? It's yeah. very black and white now. Yeah. So when we build brands and we kind of encourage people, I think it's important that brand needs to represent accuracy. Yes. Like if you, if you're a certain kind of company and you deliver results a certain kind of way and you're very straightforward versus like everything in your marketing should also reflect that tone yes. so that, so that people are just, it's one-to-one and they're like, I get it. They're exactly who they said they were. And mm -hmm. it just needs to be that way. Clear, and I, concise, and, I, and consistent. Yeah. And, and authentic, but truly authentic, you know, like it sounds silly, but like, down to the way you dress yeah no that, you know? that yeah like, dre like dress codes and polo shirts and khakis like if that's not how you dress on a daily basis and you're only dressing that way because you think it carries some kind of a perception to the customer I can tell yeah. you right now they they don't care right like like that polo shirt did nothing for you <laughs> like, like they they want authenticity right and yeah you need to be real and you need to be transparent to a degree as well. Right. You know, like I, I share a lot of my entrepreneurial stories, struggles, successes. I, I share them with my clients. Right. So that, so that they know, I understand. Yeah. I, I think that's important. You know, people that, you know, you put on all that fluff and people, you know, they don't, they don't feel that connection. But when you talk about, you know, your, your successes and your failures, people then can relate to you and, you know, and they grasp that connection. Wow. They've been through what I've been through and look at them now. And, you know, and they, they hear the compassion in your voice and they hear, you know, what you're about. And I think that's where the connection is made too. Yeah. And it's, and it's important to do that, not only for all those reasons, but it's a great filter to start cultivating the right kinds of clients. Yeah. Like if I get a client that looks at this video and says, I don't like that guy's sweatshirt. I don't like his hat. I think he's kind of a jerk. Well, then that guy <laughs> should not call me. Right. Exactly. You know, but you're going to get people that are on the other side that think, man, he seemed like a genuine character. I'm going to yeah. give him a call. Like, and that's what you want. Cause you exactly. want, yes, you want at bats. Like you want to get up to the plate as much as possible, but you want good pitches. You want good opportunities 100%. to hit the ball. Yeah. So if you're vague and you're fluffy and you're putting a message out there, they're like, like, I just want to cast a broader net. Right. Well, then you're just going to catch as many of the wrong fish as you do the right ones. And then you got to try to figure out which ones are which. Exactly. Oh, that's just, such an excellent point. Yeah. yeah. Just catch the right ones if you can. Right. No, so. that, that's so important, you know, and you're a hundred percent right with that, you know, just be authentic and just be yourself because you do want to catch the right fishes and you do want to, yes, you do want to get up to bat as much as possible, but you want, you want to be able to work with the clients that are right for you. And if you're, you're putting a lot of fluff, you're going to be bringing in people from all different areas and, you know, it's, it's better just to bring in people that, you know, that are going to work for you. That way, when you do make that connection, you know, that you could help them and, and they, you know, right that they, they can receive that help, trust it and utilize it. Yeah. And what you'll find too, is that when you, when you find yourself in those situations where you've connected on the right level with the right customer, because of how you're presenting your, right. your authenticity, you'll find that birds of a feather flock together. Those people hang out with, with people like them. Yeah. So all, so all of a sudden your referral traction is even greater. And yes. You, you just have to trust it. You had to, again, you got to believe. Oh, a hundred percent. I agree a hundred percent with you. That's very true. And, and word of mouth is the best type of advertisement. I think, you know, you know, I've gotten so much business over the course of the years just by word of mouth. And like you said, you know, birds of a feather flock together. So you, you really get in the customers that you want because that referral is, is from the same type of energy, the same type of people Correct. and, you know, and you're able to grow in that respect as well. Yeah. And, and if nothing else, like a lot of people, they put a little bit too much importance on the idea of a referral, but a referral is also an endorsement. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't need to be 
the fact that like person A brought me X, Y, and Z clients. Exactly. It's like, not necessarily. Person A might have gave you the endorsement that led to X, Y, and Z clients. A hundred percent. It doesn't have to be direct. Right. No, hundred percent. Very true. Very true. And yeah. testimonials are huge. You know, I, mm -hmm. I always encourage testimonials when people get a good testimonial, you know, flaunt it, show people, you know, because, you know, people take that to heart and people, you know, gain more trust. I think, you know, how do you feel about that? I completely agree. And that's like, one of the things for us is like, we don't try to meet client expectations. We try to exceed it. Like, yes. I try to hit home runs every time, like, because right. because I want to blow their minds. I want them to come back and tell a story of I was expecting this and I got this. Like that's right. that's the story I want to tell. A hundred percent. I completely agree. I think testimonials, referrals, like any time, you know, because you put so much time into it. Like I said, yeah, you're, we developed a model where we're building relationships, and it's a time driven thing and it's it's a time investment yeah so so of course <laughs> i expect part of that that the byproduct of that right to be referral to be endorsement and yeah and i think that's i think it's important but i also think it's it's a little abstract in the sense that you know a lot of agencies if they're transactional they don't spend enough time to even worry about it no, they don't. They don't. Because they don't they don't give it enough time, you know. Exactly. And that's that's where we're actually focused on time. So so <laughs> we try to really make it important that, you know, if we can accumulate enough victories, then you know, let's take those testimonials, those those endorsements and do something with them so that so that we can kind of tell the experience through their words. Oh, a hundred percent. Now, where can people find you? Yeah, they can find us. Um, the links are also on there, but they can find us at cyberdogsmarketing.com. And that's C-Y-B-E-R-D-O-G-Z marketing.com. And then we're on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Um, I also have a podcast called Brand Retro, um, where we talk about branding, marketing, and different things happening within the industry. And yeah, they can find us in a, in a lot of different places, put it that way. Yeah. No, I, I love everything you had to share today. You're very knowledgeable. I saw your website. It's, it's wonderful. I've heard your podcasts. They're amazing. And, you know, I, I think people will benefit a lot by, you know, contacting you and, and even listening to your podcast because you have a lot of great information to share. And I, I, I'd love to have you back on the show just to go into dive deeper into what we've been talking about today and maybe go a little more in depth. But, you know, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing all this, you know, valuable uh, information today with us. I really appreciate it. Yeah, anytime. And thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. You have a great day, Mike. You too. Bye. Bye-bye.